The US is a well-coordinated 50-state federation, and most of the uh, budget decisions and tax decisions and migration decisions are taken by the federal government. So in terms of economic models, it's a coordinated system. The, U the EU, however, is different. It's uh, 29 member states, but uh, not very well coordinated. They compete in terms of their budget, taxes, in terms of trying to attract migrants. And the result is, that is, the EU becomes a bit more generous as a welfare state and heavier taxes. And in terms of the attraction and the policy that invites migrants, she gets more low-skilled guys, where the U.S has, you know, more control over its taxes because of the coordination and she's less generous in terms of the way she transfers income from the rich to the poor or from the uh, young to the old and at the same time she's attracting a very big share of high-skilled migrants in the world and that really enhances its uh, productivity, cutting edge, you know, uh, characterization. So that's a main difference between the EU and the US. And it boils down, to some extent, to the fact that the US had a political system starting from its independence and the constitution that uh, came after that makes it very well coordinated in terms of state-by-state -state, uh, activities, whereas the EU is a new, mem new federation, if you like, but it's a very weak federation, and sovereignty resides mostly in the states, member states, and they are competing, and uh, the result is higher taxes, more benefits, social benefits, which could be good, but at the same time, they attract much more low-skilled guys, and they cannot really get enough of the high-skilled guys.